the stage was in March 2020 while I was in Newcastle. That was the fourth time I had ever spoken. This is now my 19th. So I am thrilled to get to share this with you today. So my name is Stephanie um, and I'm a program manager on the, on the Microsoft Edge Developer Experiences team. Um, you can find me across social media um, at CIATA. And today I am going to talk about HTML form controls. And why am I here to talk about HTML form controls? Well, I stumbled across this date picker while I was attempting to book my day two COVID test for this trip. And I thought, oh, this will be a great example of a current custom control that provides a completely different experience compared to the native one. And imagine my surprise when I went to the MDN docs and this was actually the native date picker. And imagine my shock of this realization that I actually haven't encountered a native date picker on a website in so long that I didn't know that this was the experience. <laughs> I've been encountering custom date pickers probably every time for, well, as long as I can remember. But this is a perfect example of the issue and the pain points that I'm gonna talk about today with native form controls. Um, and the crux of these things is that native controls are neither as customizable or extensible as modern developers need them to be, which leads to them recreating their controls from scratch and abandoning native controls despite all of the advantages that the browser engine bakes in for developers. Um, and so today I'm gonna give a brief overview of the past of HTML controls, sort of how we got to where we are today talk about the current problems um, with native controls, and then how we are proposing solving these pain points in standards groups and eventually in browsers. So first, we need to go back to 1995, um, when HTML 2.0 became the first specification that was ratified by the W3C. And with that specification came our first set of standardized form controls. But the specification didn't standardize form parts or how they were built. It standardized the method to enter data into an HTML document and for that data to be used to perform an action such as logging into a website. So it standardized what the forms were supposed to do but not how they were built. And so we have our spec and we have some standardized HTML building blocks to build websites, um, but we're still missing something. This is early days of the web we're lacking a standardized styling language. So CSS wasn't supported by the HTML standard until HTML 3.20 in 1997, but it wasn't even actually until 1999 um, that browsers really embraced and supported CSS with the 4.01 specification. So that's four years later. So if we go back to 1995, we have form controls um, but we have no styling language to style them. So browsers had to rely on the operating systems to render and style those form controls, and that led to a dependency on the operating system. But this, was, it's, this is not how it's done today, so it has evolved since then. But even later on with early versions of CSS, there were parts of form controls that CSS just couldn't access. Um, and the other side of this was that browser vendors were also extremely reluctant to make controls uh, more stylable because they were a reflection of the operating system's visual appearance. And so the idea that developers would want or need to make form controls look different or customize them wasn't really a concept. And so when they finally accepted that developers wanted this, um, we were given the appearance property but it only controlled the system level styling and developers didn't actually use appearance for its intended purpose. And on top of that, it wasn't actually implemented as designed by browsers. And that led to lots of partial support and interoperability issues, especially in the early 2000s when Internet Explorer was the dominant browser. It didn't even support it, so it wouldn't even work in IE. And so if we jump 26 years, so if we jump to now, um, that's 26 years of the web evolving has led us to the state that we're in now. And the, de the web has definitely improved since then, but in those 26 years, we haven't really done much 
to make native form controls easier to work with, even though there have been some improvements. And we've even gone on to add some new form controls. And so if we look at the state of styling current controls today, I've got them bucketed out into three categories. And most of the controls that we really want more control over styling are in our third bucket, which I call the good night and good luck bucket because of how hard it is to style these if you can even style them at all. And then on top of that, we have all these browser inconsistencies in how they render. And so as a web designer, before I knew about the web platform, it was really, really hard to explain to my clients why the, the form controls look differently in different browsers, and that was so frustrating. And that, again, boils down to that issue that I discussed initially, that form controls and their parts were not standardized, so browser engineers built and then styled them differently. And this is just looking at a couple of the top browsers today. And so on top of poor CSS access to style controls and then browser inconsistencies, we can't actually extend the functionality of a control. I love this tweet from Scott Gell. You have one problem. You want icons in your select menu options. You decide to make a custom select menu, you now have at least 75 problems. <laughs> and that's because when you rebuild a control from scratch, instead of using the native control, you don't get all of the good stuff that's baked in, like accessibility and security. Uh, by the browser. And so as a developer, you have to add all that back in, and then you have to test it to ensure that you did it correctly. That's a lot of time, and that's a bad developer experience, but it's necessary when you can't extend your controls the way you need to. A great example of this is the video element, where the developer either gets all of the controls or none of them, just by adding or removing the controls attribute. And when we want our HTML controls to look like this or this, it's no wonder developers have just reverted to building forms from scratch every single time. And so on the browser side, um, we decided to step back and ask some questions because we wanted to make sure that this was an area that we should go invest in. We knew it was a pain point, but were better native form controls something that developers really, really wanted? And the answer was overwhelmingly yes. So my colleague, Greg Whitworth, who is now at Salesforce, um, in, ran an initial survey on Twitter um, to really start to dive deep into this space. So he had a variety of respondents from different roles and varying degrees of experience with working on the web. And one of the questions asked was, which form control did respondents recreate the most? And these were the top 10. Select came in at first at 10.7%, checkbox at 10.2, and then date at 9.5%. And then he wanted to know why. Why were, the, why were developers um, rebuilding controls from scratch? And over a third said it was because they couldn't change the appearance sufficiently. Another third just wanted to add functionality, so they wanted to extend their control and just under a third said because of browser inconsistencies, which we can probably assume has to do with appearance. And so if we lump that in with the first group of respondents who said it was because they couldn't change the appearance sufficiently, that's two thirds of developers spending all of this time recreating controls just for appearance. And then Greg shared an amended survey uh, with JS Confi U attendees in 2019, and he asked two additional questions. He asked, which form control gives you the mo most frustration and why? And Select clearly stole the show here with nearly 50% of respondents saying Select and Date was the next closest one at 17.3%. And then he asked why, and these were some of the verbatims that he got. Select requires hacky tricks. Can't style option elements at all to the extent we need to. But the amount of work it takes to implement an accessible alternative with complete feature parity is massive. And I can just feel the pain oozing out of this response. And so this prompted me to ask my own question of developers. I wanted to know, how painful is it? 
And so I did my own research and went to Twitter and I asked developer and front end designers to please fill in the blank. I would rather blank than attempt to style a native select element. And y'all really hate select <laughs> a lot. Um, I think I got over 250 responses to this tweet and I'll just highlight some of my favorites. So I would rather call each person attempting to use the form and ask them what option they would like. I'd rather build the entire site in Flash, support IE6, chew on glass, and this has been my favorite. Um, maybe a bit melodramatic, but heat up a rusty old fork with a few tines snapped off and broken, and then with both arms, thrust it into my inner thigh, then attempt to style a native select menu. So clearly, we have an issue. This is clearly a pain point for developers. So let's talk about the future and what's to come, and also what's been in progress, because so there's been some stuff in progress since I first started giving this talk. And I'm excited to share that it's shiny and exciting. Um, and so the first bit of work that I'm going to talk about is specific to Chromium. So Edge has been leading con the controls work, and we've been collaborating closely with Chrome to make updates to the native controls in the Chromium project. And so our first focus was improving the style of native controls in Chromium and then accessibility improvements. So we, were, we brought some of that accessibility work that we had in the HTML, Edge HTML engine over into Chromium when we made that switch. And so with the new styles, um, the team landed on a much more modern and neutral look that we hope lessens the time spent on recreating form controls purely for styling purposes. Um, while we work on the standards work to bring better control styling to browsers, or at least to the Chromium browser. Um, but that's not all we've done to the native controls in Chromium. So uh, as of June this year, I'm excited to share dark mode for form controls in Chromium. Um, and so when a web developer expresses support for dark mode and the user has this mode enabled, our user agent style sheet will auto darken form controls out of the box. And so like normal, styles that are added by a web developer or user will override the user agent style. So if you've made your text input background bright yellow, um, you'll need to update that color yourself in dark mode using the prefers color scheme media query. But to render all document form controls in dark mode, um, a, mid, a meta tag declaration is needed to let the browser know which color modes the website supports. So our declaration here tells the browser that it's safe to render controls as light or dark. And this is available in Microsoft Edge on the desktop in version 87, um, Chrome on Android for version 91, and future versions of Microsoft Edge for Android. And you can go to aka.ms WAC dark dash controls for more information on how to implement that. And then next I want to talk about HTML because HTML isn't done. Um, it is a living language. So we're also looking at new native components um, for HTML and a lot of these proposals are coming out of the research being done um, and the work that has started with rebuilding the select element. And so while looking at how we wanted to build a new version of select, um, the team identified a need for a universal pop-up element. And this proposal, uh, this proposed pop-up element is a transient user interface and that's displayed on top of all other web UI. And so this would be things like action menus, form element suggestions, content pickers, and teaching UI. Um, additionally, the key differentiator for a pop-up element from other aesthetically similar elements is something that we're calling light dismiss behavior. And so light dismiss behavior means that the pop-up will automatically be hidden when one of three things happens. So the user hits the escape key, um, the layout of the pop-up or its anchor element is changed, or focus moves outside of the pop-up and its anchor element if applicable. And a generalized definition of light dismiss is currently being discussed in the Open UI Working Group, which I will talk about a little bit later. And so elements that don't have 
like dismiss behavior would be things like alerts, toasts, custom tool tips, and other persistent popover UI. So if we look at our basic example here for pop-up, um, we have a button element and a pop-up element. And to tie the button to the pop-up, we have our button ID equals menu button, and we'd use an anchor attribute and set that value to the button ID of menu button. And currently, pop-up menus are not visible until show is called by the author, so we do need some script here. Um, for more information on pop-up, um, you can go to aka.ms whack pop-up dash explainer, and there's quite a bit more um, technical details in that explainer. And then there's some other fun work that's been going on um, in the OpenUI working group. So uh, we have a demo of what tabs could possibly look like um, in the browser. And so this is all experimental um, and would require proposing quite a few new elements um, to get this to work. Um, but this is getting the work started to figure out if this would meet developers' needs. Um, and so you can go check out that tabs demo at aka.ms whack tabs dash demo. Uh, the other thing that we're looking at is something called anchored positioning. And so this is a proposal that allows the anchoring or pinning of top layer UI, like the pop-up, um, we see here to a point on another element. And so how the top layer UI is positioned with respect to its anchor element is further influenced or constrained by the edges of the layout viewport. So in our example here, we have a menu whose top left point is anchored to the bottom left point on a menu button. And when there's insufficient space in the viewport below the button, um, the pop-up menu would be rendered above the menu button instead. And again, you can check out more information on um, anchored positioning at aka.ms whack anchor dash pause. And now let's talk about um, the thing that I'm most excited about. So um, let's talk about fixing the current problems with controls and styling and extending them. So last year in August 2020, um, an explainer with the proposed solutions for how we want to approach enabling customization of controls UI was released um, by Chrome Edge and the Open UI Working Group. Um, the proposal for form controls is using the MVC design pattern, where the form control is made up of three distinct parts, so a model, a view, and a controller. And the goals that this proposal set out to accomplish revolve around enabling as much customization as possible while reducing the overhead for the developer. And so we're proposing three different solutions that offer a range of flexibility in customization depending on what the developer wants. So let's just dive into the first solution. So again, in that brief history of controls that I talked about, um, the root of the issue is that form controls and their parts aren't standardized, and so they're not reachable by developers. OpenUI um, is the initiative under the YCG, which is the Web Incubator Community Group, to standardize form controls and components. And the Open UI team, which is open to anyone who would like to uh, participate, is focused on researching and documenting design systems and frameworks that are already out there today. They're identifying patterns in naming and use cases, and then using those patterns to establish cow paths for standards and eventually browsers. So because select was the biggest pain point um, for developers, it's been the first form that Open UI started to research. Um, there's an editor's draft proposal for select uh, on the Open UI website if you want to go check that out. Lots of different details, use cases, um, references to some of the frameworks that, that we uh, referenced. And so when I talk about standardizing control anatomy, I'll use select as an example of what that can look like. So we would define the anatomy of a select as consisting of one button part, containing one selected value part and one pop-up list box part that contains zero to n option parts. And then we'd go on to define the expected behavior of a select, like what happens when you click on it, and so on. 
So this standardized anatomy will allow the styling of native parts using pseudo classes and the part pseudo element. So a developer will be able to change the color of a select button, for example, in an interoperable manner without replacing any of the HTML. So in our example here, we have our CSS class called styled select, and we're utilizing the part pseudo element to target the button to change the background color. And notice the HTML code here is just the code of a select today, so you wouldn't have to rewrite any of the actual form control. We're just exposing the parts of a select and giving developers access to styling via pseudo elements and classes. And then additionally, um, other states will also be standardized. So for example, the open state for select. So that's our first proposed solution. Our second proposal um, enables more powerful customization of controls and the content within them with something called named slots. So a set of slot names will correspond to each piece of the controls view that a developer might want to replace with their own content. So in the case of select, we would have slot equals button and slot equals list box. And that will indicate to the platform that custom content will be slotted in by the developer. Um, and in addition, developers would add part equals button and part equals list box, which I'll go into briefly in a moment about why that will be needed. But if you've ever wanted to add like a country flag or some other visual content into your list box for select, which is just the drop down, this will allow you to do that without rewriting the whole control from scratch. Um, slots also provide the flexibility to customize only specific parts of a control. So let's take input type equals range as an example. So a developer could provide a slot and a part name for the, mo for the movable thumb and the UI for the track would automatically fall back to the default provided by the platform. Um, and there's actually quite a bit of work that would need to be done, so this is sort of the, the dream of what we would like to see happen. And so you might be asking, why do I have to provide both a part and a slot name? So by adding part to your code, this will signal to the platform that it has code to wire up to your control and that will apply native event handlers where applicable to handle user input, which means that developers can make UI tweaks without having to write tons of JavaScript or rewrite tons of code. Additionally, this will also apply the correct accessibility semantics to your controls as well. So by adding part to your code, uh, you're just letting the platform do what it was meant to do and applying those things for you. Just add your parts. And our third solution um, is shadow DOM replacement. So currently, attach shadow, this throws an exception. You can't call it on any form control currently. Um, and so we're proposing removing this restriction when enabling customization for a given control. And calling attach shadow will result in the default user agent shadow DOM being swapped out with a new shadow root um, that will be populated with content provided by the developer. Um, developers will still be required to label the core parts of their shadow DOM using the part attribute, otherwise the shadow DOM will not be rendered. Um, the platform is not going to make an attempt to guess at the correct behavior and won't render an incomplete control implementation. And again, just add your parts and let the platform do what it was meant to do for you. Um, please go check out the explainer at aka.ms wet controls dash explainer. There are so many more technical details um, that I don't have time to go into today. Um, but I want to say we need you. We need your feedback and your opinions on this work. Um, and there are multiple ways that you can do that. So you can contribute to the forum control investigations on OpenUI. Again, uh, anyone can join that um, working group. Tell browser vendors what you need from your form controls, whether it's new form controls or certain functionality that you expect a form control to have. Be loud and let us know. We do listen to that. Um, and then you can also provide feedback on the explainers. Um, those are all hosted on GitHub, so you can go open an issue, um, and our team will look at those and respond to those. 
Uh, you can also follow these folks. So Nicole Sullivan is the Google Chrome PM working on this. Um, Greg Whitworth is at Salesforce and he runs the Open UI working group. And I'm Stephanie, I'm Ciata, uh, and I am the Microsoft Edge PM on this right now. Um, because we are here to listen, because these improvements are ultimately for you. Thank you.